Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom. It's our literature unit, and we are studying the novel called "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep?" The author is Philip K. Dick. It was written a long time ago, 1968,、um, and I think back then, at least for me, I was too young to know, but. Back then, it seems like we had a lot of science fiction being written、um, at that point in time. And as I got older, I got into science fiction with an author called Ray Bradbury. I, I love, loved his stuff, and they were short stories, which were quick to read. This novel is not long; it's only two hundred pages, and. Uh, Uh, it's a good one to get your teeth into if you like、um, dystopian science fiction. Right, and of course you should see the movie that's based on this novel, Blade Runner. But again, as I said last time, there are lots of differences between the novel and the movie. So yeah, read the book yourself and see the movie yourself to find out what those differences are. And remember, last time we were summarizing this、mm-hmm. story, and where we left off, we've got Rick Deckard, who is a bounty hunter, and he just got an assignment to eliminate six Nexus Six robots who have come to the Earth and. They're not supposed to be there, and we'll find out what happens next as we continue to summarize our featured work of literature for the month of June. At the Rosen Association, Deckard encounters Rachel Rosen. After performing the test on her, he realizes that she is an android. He is astonished because Rachel almost passes the empathy test. She offers him assistance. In taking out the other androids, but he refuses her help and leaves. Soon, Deckard uncovers the first rogue android, who is pretending to be a Soviet police officer, and subsequently kills him. He then goes to the opera house to take out his next target, an opera singer. While he is administering the test on her, she calls the police. Deckard is brought in for questioning, but while in the station. He discovers that the senior officer there is an android. He manages to kill him and escape, and then goes back to kill the opera singer. On his way home, Deckard uses his reward money to buy a live goat for his wife. Deckard's boss calls him and demands that Deckard find the other three androids that night. He asks Rachel for help. When she arrives, she seduces him. And Deckard begins to have feelings for her. She then reveals that many bounty hunters are unable to kill androids after falling in love with her. Deckard feels betrayed and goes to confront the remaining androids in an abandoned apartment. One of the androids is a replica of Rachel. He overcomes his emotional struggle and kills her and the other two androids. Despite his triumph. Deckard feels empty and discouraged. His mood transforms when he stumbles upon a live frog. When he shows it to his wife, she informs him that it is simply a fake. Deckard goes to sleep, feeling depressed and questioning his life. It's time now for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson. Again, it's empathy and humanity. In do androids dream of electric sheep? And remember, we just had Deckard,、uh, Rick Deckard, heading over to the Rosen Association to do some snooping there to get, to get some information. And at the Rosen Association, Deckard encounters Rachel Rosen. Okay, if you encounter somebody, that means you just come across this person. You find them.、Uh, it's usually something that's unexpected. Okay, he did not expect to see this person there, so he、uh, gets to know her. He's introduced to her, and after performing the test on her, he realizes that she is an android. So at first, he couldn't tell if she was real or an android. So he performed that test on her, and then the results of the test. Revealed that she is indeed an android or a robot. Ooh! So after he does perform the test, he's probably shocked, and it says right here, he is astonished. Why is he so surprised? That's what astonished means. You're very, very surprised. You're shocked. He's surprised or astonished because Rachel almost passes the empathy test. 
So what does she do? Well, she offers to assist him, or she offers him assistance in taking out the other androids. When you see this phrase "taking out," and you're watching a movie about. I don't know assassins or people who are getting killed. If someone says they're going to take somebody out, that means they're going to kill them.、Uh, I was just watching.、Uh, I think it was、um, John Wick,、uh, mm-hmm. which I had not seen earlier. I just thought, ah,、uh, you know. But I like Keanu. I think he's a good guy in real life, actually. And I thought,、oh, I'll just give it a a quick look because it was so popular. But it really is kind of a guys' film. I think there's lots、mm. of、uh, bloody killing. <laughs> you、right. know, it's kind of gross. But they use that phrase a lot in those kinds of movies, those action movies. We're gonna take him out. We're gonna take them all out.、Uh, they're not taking you out for dinner. No, no,、mm. no. They're killing you. So she offers、uh, Rachel. That is. Offers to assist、um, uh, Rick in taking out the other androids, which means she would help him kill other androids like herself. But he refuses her help and leaves. Right. Thank you, but I don't need your help. I can do this myself. And soon, Deckard uncovers the first rogue android who is pretending to be a Soviet police officer, and subsequently kills him. So, if you uncover something, you find the truth about something. You're looking for something that is hidden, and then you reveal that thing. I found it. Here it is. I've uncovered the truth.、Uh, you're actually、uh, going to inherit the company from your father. Nobody knew that before, but I uncovered the truth. And so here he finds the first rogue. Rogue android. A rogue usually refers to somebody who's kind of a bad person and nobody likes them. But rogue usually means they're kind of separate from the group. They're not really accepted by the group. And these are rogue androids because they're not supposed to be on the earth. They're kind of like、uh, roving criminals. Ah, that's a good way to describe them, actually. So, yeah,、uh, he then goes. It says here, after he discovers that rogue android,、um, he goes to the opera house after taking out the Soviet police officer,、um, and he goes to the opera house, who. Who who knew opera singers could be androids? So he then goes there, tries to take out his next target, an opera singer, and it's a female. And while he is administering the test on her, remember he has to verify or confirm that she is indeed an android, not a human. While he's doing this test on her, she calls the police. She probably knows what's going on. I'm sure the androids all warn each other when they hear about some of this stuff going on that the humans are coming after them. So Deckard is brought in for questioning, but while in the station, he discovers that the senior officer there—guess what? He's also an android. He's surrounded by androids. He manages to kill him and get away or escape, and then goes back to kill that opera singer. Right, so he's already killed a number of androids here.、Uh, he's got the opera singer. He's got the Soviet police officer, and then he's got the police chief,、mm-hmm. the senior officer there. And on his way home, Deckard uses his reward money to buy a live goat for his wife. Remember, he's a bounty hunter, and if you're Uh, if somebody has a bounty on their head and you kill them, then you get the money.、Mm-hmm. So he got this reward money. It's money that he got as a prize, I guess, or for services rendered. Right.、Uh, it's the bounty he received, and、uh, he's got this money, and he loves his wife dearly, and he thinks, "Hmm, I know what I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her a live goat because we can have goat milk, and we can." You know, shear the goat later, and maybe knit a angora sweater from that goat. I don't think you can get angora from no, goats, though. No, that's a different animal. Maybe cashmere or something <laughs> like that. Cashmere goat. They、but、are it, such it,、yeah. mean animals, though. Who wants a goat? That's why it's still left living because they're so mean.、Mm, exactly. <laughs> Now, I want to mention before we move on something else about reward.、Uh, we're given a reward if we do something of service. Maybe you find someone's wallet. I had a really nice. Cab driver 
find my phone on the back seat of his cab. I'd forgotten it, of course,、mm. with my wallet. I was just, you know, having a hard day that day. I guess I forgot everything, and he brought it back to me, and I gave him. Uh, some money as a reward.、Uh, I think you can thank people for being honest, and he was so nice to bring it back. And I, I really need my phone for work, as you know. So everybody does,、yeah. indeed. And I also wanted to mention the difference、yeah. between the word reward and. Award. An award is something you get for some kind of achievement, like in a speech contest or some kind of、uh, sports competition.、Uh, you can get、uh, an award that way. But reward is money、uh, that you get for doing something, like、uh, returning someone's wallet or killing a robot. Now, here in the next paragraph, it says Deckard's boss calls him and demands that Deckard find the other three androids that night.、Mm. So there were six Nexus Six robots in total. Or androids, and he's got three of them so far, and he got he has some reward money. Maybe he's、uh, getting a little lazy here. Hey, I got some money. I'm just going to relax for a little while. But his boss says, "Nope, your job is not finished yet. You need to find those other three androids as soon as possible. In fact, you need to do it tonight." Or maybe you're going to get fired or something like that. Ooh, no rest for the weary. He has to get right back out there and try to find those androids. But unlike androids, people need sleep. We get tired. Humans、uh, run out of energy and they need their rest. But、uh, he has to get back out there. His boss is demanding it. If you demand something, it's a very strong.、Um, A request that someone makes. So he then turns to Rachel. Remember Rachel at the Rosen Association? She was an android that said she'd help him go after some other androids. He asks Rachel for help. Now we're going to find out that this story takes a little turn here. But first, this is a good time to take a quick break. We're going to listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be right back. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们今天继续来看《银翼杀手》这个故事。昨天我们就讲到说啊，这个时间是在一九九二年的时候，世界呢已经被毁灭了，然后有。Android 有仿生人、机器人，因为联合国希望大家赶快移民到别的星球。可是 Android 居然会杀死自己的主人，还逃来地球哎！所以有一个叫做 Rick Decker 这个 Bounty Hunter 赏金猎人，他现在有一个任务，要来找连锁六型的六个来到地球的更先进的仿生人。不过他要先做测试啊，因为仿生人是没有 empathy， 没有同理心的，所以我们赶快看今天的故事第一段。后来啊 ，Decker 他就在那个罗森协会去开始去求助嘛。他首先呢，在那个地方啊，先看到了 Rachel Rosen。这个 Rachel Rosen 出现在第一段的第一句，她也是女主角哦。那当然 ，Decker 要先对她进行一些测试嘛，就发现这个 Rachel 比较没有 empathy， 应该是个仿生人。不过 ，Decker 非常的震惊，因为 Rachel 几乎都快要通过心理测试了，而且 Rachel 居然还提议啊，要帮助 Decker 除掉其他的仿生人。可是 Decker 拒绝他了，拒绝他，然后就离开。那后来呢 ？Decker 又发现另外一个叛变的仿生人。我们看一下第一段的。第五句，在这个地方有补充说明的关系子句哦。先行词是 the first rogue android， 就是所谓的第一个。伪装的所谓的叛变的一个仿生人，那 who 从后面呢，一直到逗点这个地方，就是插入补充说明。这个 Android 如何呢 ？Who is pretending？ 他就是呃伪装啊，成为一个 Soviet police officer， 就是苏联的警察，他是这样子。然后呢，因为就发现他嘛，然后做了测试，然后就直接把他杀死。好，先干掉一个，有六个哦。然后接着呢，就要去歌剧院消灭下一个目标。他是一个歌剧演员，可是在进行测试的时候啊，这个 Android 很聪明。She called the police。好，我们刚刚讲的已经到第一段的第七句喽。那当然，警察就来啦，就被带回去 questioning， 就被带回去这个质问。然后在警局的时候，哎 ，Decker 居然发现这个 Senior Officer 也是一个 Android。现在已经到了第八句哦，所以这个高阶警官就既然是一个 Android，Decker 就把他杀死，设法杀死他，然后逃脱了之后，再回去把那个歌剧演员给杀了
，在第九句的地方，同样第一段第九句，我们看到动词是 manage to do something， 它指的就是 try to do something， 就表示很努力，想方设法的去完成一个动作。那所以现在就是变成已经杀死三个了哈，三个仿生人了，还剩下三个，对不对？不过这时候就出现了一个插曲啦，因为在第一段的最后一句第十句这个地方，那在这里因为得到了一些 reward， 既然 Decker 是 bounty hunter， 他当然杀死仿生人之后就会有一些 reward money， 他就买了一只活的山羊给他的妻子 a live goat。那接着 Decker 的老板就打电话给他，他就要求了一件事情，就说呢，你那一天晚上一定要找到另外三个仿生人。所以他就不得不跟 Rachel 来这个寻求帮忙。不过这一段哦，还没有这么简单。第二段的第一句特别来注意一下，请注意 demand 这个字。他的老板要求 Decker 要找到另外三个 Androids， 就在当天晚上。注意哦，建议式的动词啊，不管是建议、suggest、命令、order、demand。要求好，甚至是 command 这一些单字，因为就是命令要求某人应该要怎么样，现在还没有做，应该要如何如何。可是后面那个 should 又常常会省略掉，所以你有没有看这句话的时候觉得怪怪的 ？Decker 明明就是第三人称单数，为什么后面找到另外三个 Android 的找没有加 s 呢？就是因为 find 前面的 should。做了一个省略，所以建议式动词啊，包括建议、命令、要求这一类的动词，它的语义都会有某人应该怎么样，某件事应该怎么样，可是 should 又常省略，所以后面的 that 会加上动词原形。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're on day two of our literature unit. We're talking about the novel "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep?" It was、uh, turned into a very popular movie back in 1982 called Blade Runner, and then they did a sequel. I think it was 2019, but don't quote me.、Uh, when someone says "Don't quote me." To you, it means they're not sure, and so they're they're not positive about what they just said. So don't quote them or tell other people they said that very thing. Don't quote me, but I think it was around 2019.、Um, it's a sequel to this book and to the movie Blade Runner. Now, when we left you, we had、uh, we had seen our Rick Deckard kill three of the android. Uh, robots or、um, the androids—I could just say androids. You don't have to say android robot. That's redundant.、Mm. Uh, he'd killed three of them and had felt really good about himself because he had managed to escape being killed himself while he was in the process. And he goes back home, and on his way home, he uses his reward money to buy a live animal, a goat, for his wife. But once he's home and he wants to, you know, kick back and relax, his boss calls him and demands that he go out there again and finish the job. He's got three more androids to find. Right. So he needs some help here because that's kind of a demanding assignment to kill three androids in one night. So he asks Rachel for help. And when she arrives, she seduces him, and Deckard begins to have feelings for her. Now, if you seduce someone, you act romantically toward them, and you get them romantically interested in you. She seduces him.、Uh, she comes on to him, I guess you could say, and Deckard、uh, responds favorably, and、uh, they have a little bit of a, an affair there, I guess. And、uh, he also begins to have feelings for her, even though he knows that she is a robot. But I guess because these robots or these androids are so human-like,、uh, he probably thinks, "Oh, what's the difference? It's going to be fun anyway." Yeah. Well, she then reveals that many bounty hunters are unable to kill androids after falling in love with her. She probably feels quite proud that she's tricked him, and she did it very, very admirably. So Deckard feels betrayed by Rachel and goes to confront the remaining androids in an abandoned apartment. If you're betrayed, it means someone's been disloyal to you, someone you trust, and they've they put you in a situation that you've been harmed. 
or maybe really upset. You can betray your country by selling、uh, your country's secrets to spies from another country. But here, it's just being you're being betrayed by someone who you expected that you could count on and that you could trust. Right. Okay. So he's betrayed by Rachel. So of course he's going to work on his own now. He goes to confront the remaining androids in an abandoned apartment. If you confront something or something or someone,、uh, you actually face them and you deal with the problem. And so of course he knows he's got to kill these other androids.、Uh, it's a reality that he cannot escape from. He's got to do it. So he's going to confront them. And of course, for some reason, or for some reason, he knows that they're in this apartment somewhere,、mm. which is abandoned. If something's abandoned, that means people no longer live there; they've left, and it's empty. Of course,、uh, all around Taiwan, in various places, there are abandoned buildings, as there are in other countries as well.、Uh, buildings that, for some reason, are not being used, and they can't tear them down because of legal issues, so it remains abandoned. I think there's an abandoned building on Shinilu here in Taipei. Taipei, it's been sitting there empty for many, many years. Wow! It's got graffiti written all over it.、Mm -hmm. But in any case, this is an abandoned apartment, and one of the androids is a replica of Rachel. A replica is a copy of something, and this happens sometimes when you want to copy something. To protect the original, you have a replica of that thing, like in a museum, for example. If the original piece is just so valuable and so precious,、yeah. they actually just make a replica of it so that you can look at that instead of the actual real thing.、Uh, they do that at Yelio here in Taiwan. There's a replica of the Queen's Head Rock. They're encouraging people to take their pictures in front of that instead of the real thing, so that the real one doesn't get damaged. Oh, I hadn't heard that.、Uh, if you're into Films, you've probably wondered how the special effects,、um, you know, managed to come up with a replica of an actor's head or face that looks so similar that when they、uh, shoot that face with a bullet and his head explodes, it looks real. But they're actually able to do that、um, in movies, so they'll make replicas of different things because, of course, they don't want to hurt the real actor. So he、um, he knows that one of the androids is someone who looks exactly like Rachel. But even though he had begun to have feelings for Rachel, he overcomes his emotional struggle and he kills that robot anyway. And he manages to kill the other two androids in that abandoned building. Now, despite his triumph, Deckard feels empty and discouraged. If you feel empty inside,、uh, usually when we feel empty, you're just、uh, you're just so tired. You just Don't have anything to look forward to. You don't feel anything. You feel numb. That's another way you could say that to feel empty or feel numb. I、um, mean, he feels discouraged. If you feel discouraged, you no longer have the confidence that you need to continue doing something, whatever activity you're participating in. Exactly. So maybe you have a friend who really wants to be a rock and roll star or something like that, but you know,、uh, in your heart, that he has no talent. He only knows about three chords, and he can't count worth a darn. Oh dear. So you probably discourage him. Well, you know, John, I think you'd be better off、uh, trying to become an engineer or something like that. You just don't have the skill to become a rock and roll star. So you try to discourage that person from doing something.、Uh, that's the verb to discourage, and the opposite of Course is to encourage somebody. Maybe John actually does have talent, and you think, "Hey, John, you should be a rock and roll star." I, I encourage you to start a band, and maybe eventually、uh, some record producer will discover you and give you lots of concerts to perform, and you'll be really rich. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Well, remember, Rick Deckard comes home, and even though he has managed to accomplish his task. And take out six of those androids. His boss is probably happy. Despite this, and we call it a triumph because he feels like he, you know, is successful in achieving、uh, his goal. He feels empty inside. He doesn't feel anything. He doesn't feel good, and he、uh, he actually feels discouraged. So his mood transforms, though, when he stumbles upon a live frog. Now, if your mood mood transforms, it just means it changes completely. So he started out feeling numb, discouraged, down, and suddenly 
He ran into a live frog. Remember, it's very hard to find any live animals. Most of them have gone extinct, which is so sad. So, of course, he gets excited about that. He shows it to his wife, and boy, does she just、uh, pop his balloon! She makes him feel bad again, doesn't she, Tom? She does. She informs him, or she tells him that it's not a real frog. It's simply a fake. It's a It's a replica of a frog. It's a cybernetic unit. It's a cyborg. It's an android, and I suppose that would be quite discouraging if you really thought that you found a live frog. Look what I found. This is wonderful. It's actually a real live amphibian. But the wife knows better. She can recognize it as being fake. Which also suggests that maybe his wife is actually a robot as well, because it takes one to know one, as they say. Maybe this、uh, robot or this android wife knows how to identify an android frog. Do you know something we don't know, Tom?、Uh, well, no. This、uh, particular scene is not in the movie. Oh, okay. All, and I have not read the novel.、So、well, I was thinking, you know, he had an affair on his wife. I wouldn't be so、um, happy to congratulate a husband who came home after an affair either.、Mm. But that's another story. So Deckard then goes to sleep, and he's feeling depressed at that point and questioning his life. Oh, there's no meaning to my life. If you're depressed, you really just are very, very unhappy. All your hope is gone. Nothing to live for. So yeah, it ends kind of on a down note. That's why it's called a dystopian novel. Right, he feels depressed, and yes, indeed, I'd probably feel the same way if I were a bounty hunter, constantly killing android creatures. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, it'd probably、uh, get on your conscience a little bit. Okay, that brings us to the end of our summary of our featured work of literature for the month of June, two thousand twenty-three. Right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. 接着 ，Decker 因为这个事很紧急嘛，他跟 Rachel 求助，可是 Rachel 抵达了之后呢？他就勾引了 Decker， 而且 Decker 居然还喜欢上他哎、欸，然后 Rachel 很高兴，还说：“哦，很多人爱上我之后啊，就没有办法再杀死仿生人了。”不过这时候的感觉是不太好的。Decker 觉得他自己被背叛。我们现在已经到了第二段的第五句哦 ，Decker feels betrayed， 他觉得被背叛，所以他就自己离开，然后前往一个废弃公寓对付其他剩下的仿生人，其中一个。仿生人居然还是 Rachel 的复制品哎！现在出现在第六句的地方，这个复制品叫 replica。好，那当然，如果看到有一点喜欢的 Rachel， 虽然知道他是 Rachel 复制品，可是看起来就是 Rachel， 又有点喜欢。不过 Decker 克服了那种情感上面的困难，把他直接杀了，然后另外两个仿生人也杀了，所以总共就杀了六个仿生人。那当然，这时候 Decker 他就就胜利啦。可是他的心情不是很好，虽然拿了钱，然后也把这些仿生人都干掉了，但是呢，这个心情觉得好像非常的 empty。然后他偶然呢就发现一只活的青蛙的时候，他就觉得很开心啊，他的心情啊不太一样。然后他就把这只青蛙拿给他的妻子看，结果这个妻子跟他说，这居然是一个假的。所以 Decker 就怀着很消沉的感觉，然后质疑他自己的生活。然后就入睡了。不过，文章当中最后一句这个地方用的是分词构句哦。Decker goes to sleep， 睡觉去了。同时间 ，feel depressed， question his life。这两个动作，因为是睡觉，然后同时的感受，所以把 feel 跟 question 都做了动词 ing， 也就是逗点之后的 end 做省略。而句子最后面倒数第四个字 end。的这里的连接词，则是连接两个动词 ing feeling 跟 questioning。我们明天还会针对啊这个小说做更多的分析，尤其是它的主题。我是安娜，我们明天见。That's all for today. Make sure you join us next time when we actually talk about this novel and the author himself in our next program. So please join us then. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.